Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today I want to continue this project where I'm installing a Xeon processor in a regular PC board over here and right now I've gone back to how I got this PC I've actually installed the Intel dual core in it it's a E6600 and I just ran a test and it scores 1775 and that's actually pretty good because in the CPU benchmark thingy online it only scores about 1592 I think I remember that it was but we are going to be upgrading this because that's not enough so we will be installing a CN processor in this I already have this working so the CN processor part of it does work but we're going to be putting it in again and we're going to be overclocking it Let's just see what we are working at here. I have the I have a test program here, and that's the performance test, and that's uh, evaluation mode. I do have the pro problem that when I install this program and I exchange the processor, the program thinks that it has been moved to another PC, and it alerts me that my evaluation mode has ended and stuff like that. But it still kind of works, so that's okay. Over here on Windows, I just ran the, the test again. I have two cores right now that we're gonna be upgrading. And I also ran this, the onboard or the internal Windows 7 test. How fast is this PC? And right now the, the the CPU is getting 5.9, which is not really very good. But the slowest thing is the graphics card, but we're not going to be worrying about that. So right now 5.9 on the CPU in, in that test. And here we have CPU set and that shows it shows the frequency in real time when we're doing something. We can just run this test again. Run run all CPU test here. Right now the CPU will hit 2400 megahertz and when it's not doing anything it will drop down to 1600 megahertz and the bus speed is 266 mega and the, the front side bus is 1066 megahertz. The frequency of the RAM is 400 megahertz. We should be able to do better than that. So, yeah, we're gonna take out the CPU and put in the CM. Oh, and the result up here, now it hit 1795. The processor that we're gonna be trying with first is this Intel Xeon 5420, which is a quad-core 2.5 gigahertz. So we're gonna be putting that in, system board back here. Uh, turning off power, turning on the computer, but won't turn on of course without power and I'm just gonna this is a sport wagon setup moving the, the normal PC processor putting in the Xeon here turning it the right way if you haven't seen that video where I modified this motherboard for putting in the Xeon please go back it's well, it's only two videos back. Uh, this cooling is only a couple of hours old, so I'm not gonna clean it off the heat sink, so it's still good there. Very nice. And we'll power on this thing again. In the last video, I did a mistake with the memory blocks. Uh, there is two memory channels in this on this motherboard to this processor and I put the memory blocks in wrong. Now I've altered it so that it seems that the yellow slots here is memory block one, the red slots are memory block two and the green slots is well they actually for DDR3 RAM. I don't have any DDR3 RAM. I would be using that because that would be a lot better for this. The system has booted up and you can now very clearly see that this is the Intel Xeon CPU E5600 
5420 2.5 gigahertz and if we go down here and open a startup manager you can see that but there it is we now have four cpus or four cores sorry so we're just gonna we're gonna run the windows test again we also have this program over here not doing anything we are now running at two gigahertz and this multiplier is right now at six times and it will go up to 7.5 but the frequency is now 333 and the front side bus has altered to 1333 let's run the test again and see what we get so back here we have the windows test i just ran that that ended up um, still the graphics card is the slowest part but the processor went up from 5.9 to 7.1 which is a very nice increase we're not gonna need that anymore we're gonna run this test and down here we have the benchmark or the cpu it's a nice program that shows the free the clock frequency so when we run this just the cpu part we will see this number going up now it goes up to oh, it actually goes up a little bit too little it only goes up to about 2.3 gigahertz 2.333 gigahertz and we'll get a number here in just a little bit might be able to hear the cpu fan it has to work a little extra there we are we now get 3592 that's a nice improvement before we had 1795 so now we got 3592 minus 1795 we have double this processor is double as fast and it should be because we have double as many cores a nice little double let's go into the bias and see if we can overclock this thing here is the bias of the system and in here is the is the tweaking or overclocking functionality over here is when it goes wrong you can load optimal default settings and i did that before we can do it again yes we'll do that and we'll go in here and this is what we have to mess around with it has a it has a multiplier for the frequency here that we can mess with it has a little bit of fine tuning this model can do none or 0.5 and then it has the tpu host clock frequency and we can enable overclocking that we can go higher we can go we can go 400 on this and it will calculate up here now we get about three gigahertz of frequency uh, i can't remember if we can do that but we could try down here we have the voltage and when you increase the speed of the cpu normally it will need a little bit more of voltage for the different systems um, i'm not gonna worry super much about this i'm gonna set it to automatically so that the system will try and make it as good as possible we're gonna try these settings i'm gonna try and boot it and see if this works save to cmos and exit booting the pc with a frequency of 400 megahertz worked just fine then the camera ran out of power or well, actually it already had run out so i charged the camera again and in the meanwhile i've been making a list checking it twice after 400 megahertz on the the frequency and then you multiply it and this processor is able to do up to seven and a half times multiplying then i tried 420 still multiplied with seven and a half and that was still good then i tried 450 megahertz also multiplied by seven and a half and that was still good and then i got cocky then i tried 500 megahertz and the system crashed then i went down to 475 and the system crashed then i went down to 460 let's see the let's see my notes okay here are my notes we started with the e6600 
and that did 795 then we tried with the Xeon without anything that was 3592 then I clocked it with 400 megahertz and I got 4624 out of it I went up to 420 megahertz and I got 4803 out of the test program then I went up to 450 and got 5210 out of it and then I had the 500 megahertz didn't work 475 did not work 460 did not work and I went to try 455 megahertz and I did that twice I was mingling with different settings one time I got 5179 which is actually a bit less than this then I mingled a little bit and I got 5306 out of it and that's the settings that I have up here now so we're gonna boot the computer and see if this will work for me now save those settings and exit and the computer will be shut off and I'll have to power it on again starting windows normally I had a crashing last time I tried not not with these settings with some other settings I was trying doing the multiplier with only seven times of multiplying but that didn't really add up either so we're gonna launch the test program and that's gonna be complaining about my license see here what processor it's still the E5420 2.5 gigahertz I will test that and let that run and down here we can see that it goes up to 3.412 and a half and this time I get 5257 out of it so it's it's not totally get different result I'll just write that down but all these tests has been done with a similar processor to this one and I do actually have a better processor I have this this is a x5450 which is a quad core 3 gigahertz processor so this processor should be able to do better than the 2.5 so we're gonna put that in and I have already mounted the piece of tape that switched the two leads around that is necessary to make this ninja trick uh, having to, if you haven't seen that video go back and see that so I'm mounting this one So I booted the computer with the X5450 3GHz processor and as you can see it did you can see that right over where's my finger there 4571 that's approximately the same that I got out of the overclock E5420 so those two numbers are about the same actually the E20 was a little bit faster it was like how much is that about 60 points faster or something like that it's it's not a big difference if I measure it again it might beat it uh, this is without any overclocking at all so I'm gonna be overclocking it and see where it ends up okay first overclocking test I raised the frequency of the what is that bus speed to 400 megahertz you can see it oh, you can't see it because my face is in the way it's right over here somewhere it says bus speed it's number three of those numbers and that in in that little box right there number three of those it's about 400 megahertz and with that result i already beat the other processor over here i get 5472 out of this processor so i'm gonna continue and see where this ends up 
takes a while. So I've been mingling with this for hours and hours and I'm trying to get this processor to work at a higher frequency. And right now I have it working at 3.78 gigahertz. That's with the, the bus clock at 420 megahertz and with the multiply at, a, at times nine. And it's pretty unstable. Um, don't touch it too much and it will boot blue screen and die if this was to be used for something I would definitely go and just turn it a little bit down it ended up at like let's see if we can see that 5649 it's not a lot more than, than the E5420 did that ended up at 5306 so it's only like 340 more. Actually not a lot that you get out of this process or more, but well, we are running an overclock Xeon in this system. So that's pretty cool, I think. Um, I was able to overclock the E5420 with about 47% and this X5450 with about 23%. And uh, this 23% is pretty unstable. It seems that the higher clock frequency you get in a processor, the less amount you're able to overclock it. If anyone has some good overclocking tips for this uh, CN thing, I'm very interested. I am pretty new at this. I haven't done much overclocking. I myself mostly go for the stability instead of the last few percents. But I must admit that 47% is rather big improvement to a processor like that. Thank you very much for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again. Join me over at Google Plus and send me all your pictures of your overclock CN processors. I would really like to be smarter on this because I have booted this thing 50 times at least. Have a nice day. Bye bye.